Welcome to the Navigating Your Life show. I'm your host, Nat Williams. Tonight we're gonna to take a look at going green and the strategies that will help sustain the earth. We will investigate and educate on the many different ways you can go green and help our environment one step at a time. To highlight some of the most current statistics, it is believed that the amount of wood and paper we throw away each year is enough to heat 50 million homes for 20 years. 84% of a typical household's waste, and that includes the food scraps and yard waste and paper and cardboard uh, cans and bottles, can all be recycled. And the average time taken by a plastic bottle to decompose in a landfill is estimated to be close to 700 years. In the United States, we create 1,609 pounds of trash per person per year. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit the Allentown Recycling Center to tour their facility, and here's what happened. So we are here uh, at the Allentown Recycling Center with uh, Ann Sauerman, the uh, manager. Um, so Ann, why don't you tell us what we have here on the table? Uh, what we have here today, doctor, is um, our curbside recycling program. We have two recycling bins. It's the green recycling bins for cans and bottles. And we also have our blue recycling bin, which is our paper fiber stream and also cardboard boxes and mail. Good. So tell us how you distinguish what goes in which. We uh, started our program actually 20 years ago with just the green recycling bin. Uh, we were required by law to recycle a minimum of materials and over the years we've been able to add more recycling materials and pull it out of the waste stream mm -hmm. thereby landfilling less of our trash. In the green recycling bin it's cans and bottles so mm -hmm. it's the glass clear brown and green glass mm -hmm. bottles and jars mm -hmm. but there are some things that are problems for instance pyrex sure and i think and you had an example mugs. of a yes sure um pyrex and ceramics are a problem because uh everything would get mixed in with the glass and it goes into a glass kiln which is melted then mm -hmm. and the glass can be made into new glass bottles and jars mm -hmm. but if you see real close on the sample here there's a tiny piece of a ceramic whether it was a coffee mug or a piece of Pyrex mm -hmm. that did not melt down because that requires a higher temperature mm. to actually melt and it be causes a flaw in the glass bottle hmm. and then when w the glass manufacturers go to sell this to companies like Kraft mm. or Snapple mm. places like that the glass inspectors would mm. see that and reject the whole load of glass assuming that there's more problems right. that were close by in the processing so, so so that's an example of what glass looks like when ceramic gets mixed in with it. That's correct. So all of these materials on this side of the table will end up in this colored bin in Allentown? Yes. Okay. So tell us what's on that side of the table closest to you. Okay. This is our uh, most recently launched program and expanded program. Our blue paper recycling bin, we started only with mail and magazines and newspapers. Mm -hmm. And in 2007, we expanded it to include a cardboard, this is called paperboard, mm -hmm. from cereal boxes, from mm -hmm. drink carriers, and also corrugated cardboard boxes. And some of the other things here on the table that were products of the recycling? Well, in, in this case, these pellets were sold to companies to make carpeting. Hmm. This is actually very big, especially in North Carolina and down south. There's a lot of companies that are making uh, carpeting from recycled number mm -hmm. one plastic soda bottles. Um, this, comp this sample actually came from the Heinz Company in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. um, but it, if you like to sure. feel it, it's very sure. durable. Mm -hmm. And especially in an industrial setting, mm -hmm. it's going to last sure. a long time. Wow. Uh, this is always fun. Um, this is our t-shirt. It says, this shirt used to be a soda bottle. Wow. Recycle. And this is our Allentown Recycles t-shirt. Sure. And wow. on the back here. And uh, if you'd like to feel it, this is actually a blend. Mm. It took two and a half, two liter soda bottles to make this t-shirt mix. That's 50% of it. And the other half is reclaimed or recycled cotton. Mm. So um, this is quite interesting, but I, I do have to warn you, if you wear something like this, people will come up and want to touch it. So mm, wow. <laughs> you just have to be careful with that. So, okay. So Ann, we're outside here at the Allentown Recycling Center. Why don't you share with us what are the different parts that make up uh, the drop-off center, which I understand is open 24 hours a day. It is. 
our recycling center has uh, a self-service uh, kind of feel. We want residents to come in at any time. Mm -hmm. And all the containers are marked. Okay. To my left, you'll see we have the office paper. Sure. And uh, it directs people to each material to be placed in a certain location at okay. our recycling center. And then our workers here will pull out any contamination that we have at the recycling sure. center and prepare it for market. Well, Ann, thank you so much for spending time with us You're today. Welcome. It's been our pleasure. Oh, it's been thank my you. pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much. So much and sure. Thank you for promoting recycling. Wonderful. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Well, thank you to the staff at the Allentown Recycling Center for spending time with us and showing us their facilities and how we can help our environment. We're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to talk with a representative from an electronic waste disposal facility and two students who are taking steps to make their community greener. So stay with us. You choose your doctor. You choose your pharmacy. Why shouldn't you choose your in-home health care provider? The good news is you can and you should. When your hospital or doctor prescribes home care, Alan Lear Home Care Associates will work with you in the comfort of your own home, providing a full range of services. Our nurses are dedicated professionals that take the time to get to know you and help you return to your optimal health. Call Alan Lear Home Care Associates. Caring for you when you need us most. Christopher, age 14, has many goals. When he grows up, he'd like to be a policeman and also work at a video game store. His plans for the future include buying a house with a big garage and owning expensive cars. For the present, he enjoys being on the computer, watching television programs, and going to the movies. He also enjoys testing his skill at word search puzzles and is very good at them. Christopher benefits from special education classes. He enjoys learning about historical figures and socializing with his classmates. This teenager dreams of having a permanent family that would care for him and love him. For adoption information, please access the National Adoption Center's website at www.adopt.org. And for further information on Christopher, please contact C. Allen at adopt.org. Are you ready to experience personal success in all eight domains of life? Then join Dr. Nat Williams for the Absolutes of Success Weekend Transformation Program at Tucson, Arizona, and achieve your greatest potential. Registration includes a two-night stay with meals at the beautiful Westward Look Resort. Register today, only $6.99, or register with a friend and pay only $9.99 with shared room. Call 1-800-810-3683 or visit absolutesofsuccess.com. Well, welcome back to the Navigating Your Life show. We have three guests in the studio, so I'd like to welcome them. We have Glorinda Cook from A Plus Industries, as well as two students from Lafayette College. We have Mickey Edelman and Jen Bell, who are part of a program called Closing the Loop. So I'd like to welcome Mickey. Thanks so much. And Jen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Glorinda. So why don't you tell us first, uh, Glorinda, what your program or your corporation actually does? Uh, we do electronic recycling, basically commercial slash industrial commercial recycling. That includes um, computers and peripherals, mainframe, telecommunication equipment, application equipment, PC boards, mm. test equipment, things of that nature. Wow. Um, we don't handle TVs or appliances. Um, and if anyone wishes to dispose of anything like that, they can always contact me and I'll try to research mm -hmm. it for them and find people that will do that. Sure. Um, we break everything down for uh, PC boards mm -hmm. and on the PC boards are ICs and semiconductors of which we refurbish okay. and resell. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you keep it in use, you don't let it go away. Exactly. To waste. Wow. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we have Mickey and Jen and you have a project at Lafayette College who wants to tell us what that project is. Well, the project in, in many ways sort of grew out of garbage. Mm. Um, we looked at the waste that was coming out of our dining halls and sort of the yard trimmings from the grounds operations, and we looked at that as an opportunity. Mm. And about two or three years ago, a, a dedicated group of students, um, of which I was one, um, launched a composting project. Mm. We went to, went to Lowe's and we bought all our construction equipment, ordered some pizzas and built composting units. Wow. And we spent a couple years with our hands literally in, you know, getting dirty. Yeah making this system happen. And so we started small. We were just composting a few hundred pounds of, of waste a semester. Mm -hmm. But we gradually scaled up our involvement in the campus. We got uh, dining services on board with us. We got the grounds department on board. And thanks to the, uh, the student sitting next to me, um, we, we, who was in, we won a grant from the state of Pennsylvania. It's called a Growing Greener Grant. It supports mm -hmm. innovative environmental projects. And this grant is going to allow us to go full scale, campus wide, with our composting system. We'll be able to handle all of the food scraps that come out of our dining halls, in addition to a large portion of the leaves and grass clippings from the, from the mm -hmm. grounds. Um, and the remaining yard waste 
is going to be mulched or handled in some other way. But well. then Jen can tell you about the other component of the project, which is the usage of the compost. Sure. Please, Jen. So we were producing all this compost, <coughs> and we needed a, a place to use it. Uh, the school was using it around, um, just like on the grounds and our flower beds and things. Mm -hmm. Um, but we thought it would be cool to have a campus garden where we actually use the compost and, and grow some of our own food. So the compost is, is a good fertilizer. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's very high in nutrients. Um, it gives a lot of nitrogen to the soil. Mm -hmm. So uh, we decided to start a, a small garden um, out at Metzger Field. So we wrote a grant to the Clinton Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so Metzger is our athletic facility. It's about two miles away from campus. And... Um, when we received the grant from the Clinton Foundation, we started, um, we made a two acre area out there. Um, half of it was for students um, to work in, and we're hoping that that food will be, that we grow out there, will be served in the dining halls eventually. Wow. So that's, that's the main goal. And then the other half of the garden is for, um, is a community garden mm. for faculty, staff, and students to have their own plots that they take oh, care wow. of and grow yeah. their own food out there. Okay. Why is it important to you and your company to be involved in this recycling? It's, it's a, it's all a matter of pollution, if you ask me. It's air pollution, it's ground pollution, it's water pollution. Um, it's to keep the environment safer for our children, their children. Um, it's, it's, it's not good to have any of this waste, mm -hmm. especially my waste, electronic waste, sure. you know, yeah, um, disposed of. Mm -hmm. it, it all should be recycled properly, taken care of. It never should be um, handled the way it had been in the past years. Mm -hmm. And just help me understand when I, you know, you have a printer cartridge and you just mm -hmm. throw that in the garbage and it goes to the landfill. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? Well, you have the, the it's an ink cartridge, mm -hmm. okay, that seeps into the ground, which can seep into the water, okay, of the water that you drink, mm -hmm. and it, it's not good. Mm -hmm. It's not good for you. So keep that away from the landfill and, and mm -hmm. uh, closely monitor is, is what That's you just the ink cartridge. Then you have the plastic, which never goes away. <laughs> you know, that, that will never, like, disintegrate or go away. It'll stay in the ground forever. And the work that you guys do, are doing at Lafayette, Mickey, and, and Jen, it seems like a lot of work. And then now you're, now you're consuming some real estate, too. You have some <laughs> acreage. Uh, it just seems like a lot. And it, it seems like it's very labor-intensive. Uh, uh, why do you do what you do? Why is it important to you? I guess it's a very satisfying sort of job because you get to see a uh, product at the end that you made yourself. Mm -hmm. You get to spend some time outside, which when you spend the other 23 hours of the day in the engineering building can be a really nice thing. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, garbage is a fact of life, and, but dealing with it in more efficient ways is something that as a, as a global community we're going to have to be looking at in the next few decades. Mm -hmm. And so at, at the campus scale, what we're doing is sort of a microcosm of the kind of things that we hope to be doing in, in the world someday. Mm -hmm. And I think, you, Jen, you would agree that this is a ticking time bomb. If we don't do something about this, this is going to run into a problem. And I was driving the other day and, and going across, actually going out to Pittsburgh, and you see so much land, and you just think, you know what, you know, they'll just build more landfills if there's a problem. But reality is, if we continue on this path, there may come a point where there's just not going to be enough space to get rid of all the garbage that we're creating. Would you agree with that or not, Jen? Exactly. Um, I think we're producing, because we're in a college community, there's a lot of people living in a close mm -hmm. amount of space. So we're producing a lot of waste and we're consuming a lot of food. Mm -hmm. So it's good to kind of recycle that waste into something that we can use in, sure. in a garden to grow food um, locally instead of having it shipped in from other places. We're going to get ready to wrap up, but I want to give you a chance to share any closing thoughts that you have. So, Gorinda, would you like to share any closing thoughts? Uh, just to have everybody recycle. Very just good. to have everybody recycle. Good. Wonderful. And Jen, please. Um, I'd just like to say think local. Um, mm -hmm. Support your local businesses mm -hmm. and farmers markets mm -hmm. and local food. Very good. And Mickey, please. And I'd like to say a, a big thank you to all the students, and not only the students, but the staff and faculty at Lafayette College who have made this possible. Mm -hmm. This, as you pointed out before, was a lot of work, mm -hmm. and if it wasn't for all the people who put the pedal to the metal to get it done, it would never have happened. Wow. So it was an, a, an effort that took a lot of enthusiasm from a lot of people, and we're very grateful very for that. Good. And I thank you for all you're doing, Mickey. And thank you, Jen. And thank you, Lorenda. Thank you very much. Good. So we have to stop now for a brief commercial break, and we'll come back. We'll have a director from PPL as well as a professor and another student from Lafayette College. So stay with us, please. At Bridge to Creative Learning and Child Care Center, your child will learn and play the creative way in a safe and secure environment. We offer a fun and caring educational-based atmosphere and allow parents to monitor their child's activities. 
We are a state-licensed child care center offering academic preparation, after-school programs, creative learning, summer activities, and much more. Call us at 610-351-7400. Prepare your child for a brighter future. It's about changing the world in which we live. It's about playing, living, and working together. It's about escaping from special programs. It's about finding leadership. And social justice. The Pennsylvania Developmental Disabilities Council believes that disability is a natural part of the human condition. We are working to create a commonwealth where all people thrive in shared citizenship. And everybody wins. In these challenging times, your organization needs employees that maximize results. Human Works Training and Educational Services provides results-focused seminars for your staff. Topics include management and motivating employees, stress management, team building and leadership skills, and cultural diversity. Register today, just $89.99 or $75 for chamber members. Call 484-893-5057 or visit hwtes.com. Well, welcome back to the Navigating Your Life show. We have three more guests joining us in studio today. Now joining us is Tom Staffos, who's the Director of Customer Programs and Services at PPL Electric Utilities, and Dr. David Vysosky of Lafayette College, as well as one of his mechanical engineering students, Jason Siegel. So welcome. Thank you, Tom. Dr. Williams. Jason. Nice to meet you. And Doc Cohen. Welcome. So we're going to have a conversation today about some of the things that we can do in our homes uh, and in our lives to make uh, things a little bit easier. And I see here, uh, Tom, that you have some things with you. So why don't you start by sharing with us what some of those things are and then we'll converse a little bit more. Sure. I uh, uh, really appreciate the opportunity, Dr. Williams. Uh, PPL Electric Utilities uh, wants to encourage its customers to recognize that they have the power to make a difference, uh, particularly as it relates to the environment and their energy use. And uh, by developing a plan of action and looking at how they're using energy now, understanding how they're using energy, and then taking steps to use energy more efficiently, mm -hmm. they can help their home finances uh, by lowering their energy bills, and at the same time help the planet by uh, having less of an environmental so impact. So I think your point, Tom, is that this is a win-win situation. And so often people think, oh, it's, you know, it's you know, recycling or it's cutting, conserving energy or what, that it, it's a burden. But reality is it's really financially beneficial to you to, to do it this way. Absolutely. It, it's a matter of understanding how you're using energy and making sure that every kilowatt hour, for example, that you're using is doing work that you need to get done. Mm -hmm. So the initial thing I think everyone needs to do is to develop a plan of action, things that they can do, low cost, no cost kinds of things mm -hmm. to help them save energy. Some of the no cost things that they can do would be simply turning off lights that are not in use, turning off the television when it's not in use, mm -hmm. uh, lowering the thermostat or raising the thermostat depending on the heating or the cooling season. Mm -hmm. Those are things that wouldn't cost them any money and in most cases they wouldn't even notice the difference. Wow. Uh, there are low-cost things that you can do. We have sure. some items here on the table. Why don't you show us some of those you. if you don't mind? Well, here's one that's, that's very simple. This is a compact fluorescent light bulb. Mm -hmm. Compact fluorescent light bulbs use 25% of the energy of a regular incandescent bulb. So they use 75% less. Less energy, and they last 10 times longer than, uh, than incandescent bulbs mm -hmm. for the same amount of light. And I was in uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, and for those of us who like that old shape, they have these that have the old shape on it, so if you still want to look at the round bulb, you can still buy them with the round bulb the, on The uh, The market has responded to the growing demand for these bulbs, so I think you'll find a number of different applications from three-way bulbs to dimmable mm -hmm. bulbs to ones that can fit in candelabras, outside lighting. They're very low-cost way to, uh, to save some energy. Sure. And in fact, PPL has a CFL program with uh, stores in our service What does CFL stand for? compact fluorescent light okay. bulb uh, that uh, uh, customers can go in and they can purchase a bulb at a discounted rate to help them save okay. energy. Why don't you share with us one more of those things and we'll come back. I want to get uh, sure. Jason and the doc to join our conversation. This is a programmable thermostat. Uh, what you can do with this is have it installed okay. and allows you to control the temperature in your home when you're sleeping, when you're away, so that you lower, lower your energy use when you're away from home or when you're in bed sleeping sure. and that the energy, the uh, the heat is on when you're uh, when you're awake and sure. you're in the home. And so, an example of those that like to you know go to bed with the house being warm, an hour or so after you expect to go to sleep, you could have that. Generally, you know, the an hour or two before you're going to go to bed, you have the the uh, temperature dialed mm -hmm. down, 
and then uh, have it come up about an hour before you get out of bed in the okay. morning. And then when you leave for work or for school, you have the temperature go down again and then have it come back up just before you get home. Good. And Jason, I understand you're five weeks away from graduation, yes. so congratulations. Thank you very much. And what did you study at Lafayette? Uh, well, I'm a mechanical engineering student, um, and my, my main interest is in sustainability mm -hmm. and uh, building science. Okay. Um, last summer, I had an internship with a company where I was researching uh, renovations for existing buildings, mm -hmm. some of which include changing lighting, mm -hmm. um, uh, programmable thermostats, mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, what I've actually done for my senior project this semester is analyze Lafayette's campus, the Lafayette campus's energy usage wow. per building mm -hmm. um, with the goal of identifying the least efficient buildings and then proposing certain renovations, such mm -hmm. as these items here, mm -hmm. um, and calculating the payback periods for those renovations. What were some of those numbers like, Jason, when you actually looked at some of those payback mm -hmm. on making some of these changes? What were those numbers like? Well, certain things like windows and insulation are, are bigger investments with slightly longer payback periods. Mm -hmm. um, but small things like changing incandescence to fluorescent mm -hmm. light bulbs, the payback is a matter of months almost. And um, like, like you said, they last 10 times as long as incandescent mm -hmm. bulbs. Mm -hmm. So um, there we, we have a pretty clear list of measures that will save energy mm -hmm. and have short payback periods of up to you know, a few years mm -hmm. that are smart things to do for the college. Wow. And Doc, you, you're working with your students on some of these issues, but tell us what you're doing at Lafayette College as well to bring this to the forefront as an issue that uh, we should all be paying attention to. Well, the, the college is, is pretty, being pretty aggressive in uh, uh, trying to become more sustainable. Uh, Jason's in, in a class right now that I'm teaching this semester called Sustainable Solutions. I'm teaching with a colleague, Professor Art Kanai, to look at how our athletic fields could, the use and development of the athletic fields could be more sustainable. Mm. Uh, right now we have a couple of solar panels out there and we're going wow. to look into putting some more out there, maybe uh, wind energy or, or... What are those solar panels? Um uh, providing energy for? Right now we're feeding it back into the grid. We're mm. not really powering anything, but our, our plan is that we'd like to use it to power something specific, mm -hmm. perhaps powering uh, irrigation water for our community garden out wow. there. So the whole, the whole garden and composting cycle would be sustainable. Wow. Um, we've also got a couple of projects going on on campus to look at sustainability. One of the old fraternity houses that's going to be renovated mm. is uh, we, we'd like that to be sustainable. And the college is also working with Wachovia Bank to uh, help some homeowners in Easton's West Ward mm. become sustainable. So they're looking wow. at energy use, replacing real old bo uh, boilers, mm. uh, furnaces, putting in insulation. And we're also working in New Orleans with a group down there in the Lower Ninth Ward that's trying to recover from Hurricane Katrina wow. in a sustainable manner. They've wow. committed to being carbon neutral by 2030. Hmm. Wow. So it seems like this effort uh, for Lafayette, the, your footprint is all over the place really trying to, to take this very seriously. It hmm. is, and, and we've really been... Uh, I don't want to say pulled to it, but the impetus behind it has come from the students. Mm. Uh, the students have really taken the lead in almost all of the sustainability things that mm. we're doing on campus. Mm. We have a composting program right. that we was started by just, students. We were just on the earlier segment. And we have a green roof on part of the engineering building that mm. was initiated by students. There's one of our off-campus houses about a block from here, Reader House, mm. uh, is uh, in, uh, slowly becoming more sustainable, and that was a student initiative. And uh, Tom, you wanted to highlight two more things before we get ready to wrap up. Well, just to, just to pick up on something that Jason sure. said, developing a plan of action is really important. And for residential customers who may not have a student at their disposal to study their buildings. Well, he's he's going to be out of school soon, <laughs> so he's available. <laughs> they, for, they, can, for they can go to our website, complete a very easy profile, and that will identify a list of low cost, Good. no cost, and then moderate cost items that they can do in their homes, show them what the energy savings will be and what the dollar savings will be. One of the low cost things that you can do is to provide some caulking around your windows, mm. sealing your house so that you don't have cold air coming in during the winter and warm and uh, cool air escaping during the summer. That's a very low cost way that you can increase your efficiency and, and your comfort. And I just want to point out, some of us are good at caulking and some aren't. So right. if you're going to do it uh, and you want to save some money, get someone that really knows what they're doing. That would help. Right, okay. That would help if you could do that. Something else you can do is put a low flow shower restrictor in. Wow. And what this does is it saves water mm -hmm. and it saves the energy that it costs to heat the water that mm -hmm. you're taking your shower with. So that's okay. a very simple thing that, that the consumer can do and apply in their very homes. Good. 
Well, I want to thank all three of you for joining us uh, today. It really has been very informative, so uh, we appreciate that. We're going to go to our quick uh, break, and when we come back, we'll wrap up today's show. Enrich your life at Sacred Heart Villa, situated atop Mount St. Michael on 40-plus scenic acres. Our caring staff includes missionary sisters and on-site licensed nurses 24-7. We offer medical reminders as well as dispensing medication and transportation to medical appointments. With excellent food, fun events, a spacious hall, safe rooms, and much more, your life will be enriched. Call 610-929-5751 or go to sacredheartvilla-readingpa.org. As we all know, the job market is difficult to penetrate. Please look at the short resume on the screen and contact the email address below if this person's skills is of interest to you or your company. I sincerely hope today's show has been enlightening, encouraging, and empowering for you. We see it on our local news, in the papers, and on television. Going green is in full force. All of us must take responsibility for how we use our resources and dispose of them. There are many ways we can assist in making our planet a cleaner and safer place to live. In the water we use, the trash we, we recycle, and the cars we drive, our footprints leave a huge mark on our environment years after we leave it. Let's put the tools we've heard of today and gained from today's show into use and plant the seeds for a greener tomorrow. As we wrap up today's show, we want to let you know we're looking forward to having you join us next week when the topic will be alternate pathways to success. I wanna thank my guests for joining us today and until then, be well. A list of resources related to today's show is available on our website, which is navigatingyourlifeshow.com. On this site, there is a connection to our Facebook and Twitter pages and to our blog. While you are there, you can also email your comments on today's show or share ideas for future shows.